How have you been? It's been a minute since I've last seen you because of all the COVID issues. Um, I know everybody has gone through something these, this past year. Right. And um, I just feel like it's, it's, there's been a large gap since I've last talked to you. And, and you've gone through so many different like uh, obstacles and different trials and tribulations in your life. I felt not only as like one of your family members, but just as somebody that I've watched you grow in the music scene, I felt that um, we should just kind of relink and, and get an update from where you last left off. I know you last left off uh, the last time I talked to you, not, not, not uh, during the whole course of the time, but the, I'm talking about your music, right. uh, music career. The last time I talked to you, you were recording a few songs and you were working with the new producer. What, was he on the Inland Empire? No, it's the same producer I've been working with, with Critical. Critical. But um, the last time was when, actually, when I got those shirts from you, the big motivation shirts and the stickers. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's, that's right. Because right. right. I told you I was working on uh, my EP, Big Motivation, and it hadn't dropped yet, but I wanted to get some merch before it dropped. Right. So that that was the last time. So when I seen you, I, uh, it hadn't officially dropped yet. Or, no, did it? Well, I know you were no, doing... No, it didn't drop yet, because... Well, I helped you out with one of your album covers. I know you did a, right, right. You did a bunch of stuff, but... Uh, the one that I'm referring to, that big motivation one. Right. Uh, was that a single or was that like a full EP or well, what was it? was a that? full EP. It was like seven, eight tracks. And on there is just by my journey, big motivation, chapter one, uh, road to recovery, to recover and discover. Okay. Um, what inspired you to make that, um, EP? Well, the crazy thing about it is I, um... I wanted to do an EP. I was like, you know, I need to do a project. I haven't done a project in a while. So I was getting started with it. I booked my first studio session. And during that time is actually when I started finding out, I started getting sick with all that stuff, going to doctor's appointments. Now, now, now there's going to be new people watching this. So, right. so like when you say you got sick, um, a lot of people are new to you. Right. I mean, the, the, your family members and your friends right. are, are going to know what you've been going through. But I just feel like... Because this is kind of what inspired the big motivation, right? Right. Okay, so, like, the way I feel about it is is uh, let's let the people know what your struggles have been and what led to big motivation. Right, so it was actually, what, summer 2019, Memorial Day weekend. Um, I had gotten a physical, like, a week before that. And I was getting off work, getting ready to celebrate the three-day weekend and whatnot, I get a call from the doctor telling me that um, my blood test came back and I had low white blood count cells, meaning I asked him, like, what the fuck does that mean, you know? Yeah. I'm going on my three-day weekend. I want to turn the fuck up. What, tell me. And yeah. He's like, it could mean you have leukemia. And I was like, what the fuck? And so pretty much from there, I had to go see an oncologist, which I had to see multiple times because they didn't even know what was wrong with me. Yeah. They couldn't diagnose me. I had no symptoms. And they had thought I had multiple things, which wasn't the case. They finally narrowed it down to MDS. But it took them so long because that's an elderly person cancer. So is that like, that's rare for a person of your age to have that kind of Very thing? rare. So uh, you went to the oncologist. Right. And then what what kind of um, prognosis did they give you? What did they tell you you had? Cancer? Well, at first, I don't even remember. It was like a autoimmune system disease they thought at first. But they ruled that out because they did multiple bone marrow biopsies, pretty much, where they put the needle up in your spine and they check your blood count and all that. And I had these things called blasts, which are cancer cells. Wow. And so um, they ruled it that way. But like I said, it took them multiple times before they did it. And they did one and they, um, they did the first one. And she's like, you know what? I don't feel like it was effective or I, they didn't get the results they wanted. She says, we have to do it one more time. And I was like, so we went through it one more time. And she had told me originally that all I'd have to do was do some, like, chemo or whatever, and it would get rid of it. So then she um, came to the conclusion that, you know what, she goes, this is so rare. I've never seen this on someone your age. She goes, I think you should get a second opinion. So she recommended that I go to the City of Hope out in Duarte. And now, now um, being that 
you we you know we've had family members pass from diabetes and Lou Gehrig's disease and all these other diseases. What was your first thought? Like, what were you thinking when you got that prognosis? Like, were you worried about, you know, certain things or what were you thinking? Dude, to be honest with you, I was fucking scared the first time I went because I, I had no clue in an oncologist, whatever. So I'm sitting in the oncologist's office waiting for the doctor and I see signs all over the place asking, or not asking, telling you like, you could be cancer and all this shit. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, dude, what am I doing here? Like, like, it tripped me the fuck out. I ain't gonna lie. So, that shit tripped me out. But then when she gave the final prognosis, um, the only thing that went through my head is like, damn, I'm gonna fucking fight this and go all out. Like, it is what it is, you know. Like, I, I got it. Nothing I can do about it. I could, I could do one or two things. I could either mope about it, be all sad and depressed, and want all this sympathy, or I could just take it head on and fight this shit, and obviously I won the second round, and on top of that, I've seen a lot of fighters in the family, my dad, uh, my cousin Joel, other other relatives and stuff, so I'm like, I come from a line of fighters, so there's no way this shit's gonna take me down. So you, so you didn't think any negative thoughts at all? It was more like, I'm gonna take the bull by the horns and just, like, I'm gonna beat this shit? That's the original thought, but then, like, there's, I ain't gonna lie, there's times when I'm just in my room, like, or at night, I'm, at night a lot of times, we're going to bed and stuff, that's when my head would really start thinking, like... Did did, did depression kick in? Nah. You weren't depressed at all? Nah. Nah. Uh, yeah, because most people, you would think that, you know, you run into some obstacles, like, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to put this out there, like, when I first got type 2, right. I, I was super depressed, and that, I ended up doing something like you did, because I'm, you know, I'm a fighter as well. I ended up just saying, fuck it, and I'm going to live with whatever it is I have, and we'll figure it out. But um, how did that inspire your music? So as far as the music part, so I was wanting to do that EP, and I didn't have a timeline for it. But then once I got diagnosed, and they told me that I was going to be in the hospital for at least a month or more, whatever, I'm like, now I got a timeline, and now I need to get this shit done. So it was, I believe, I started treatment in March of 2020, and they started chemo and whatnot. And that's when I actually started working on my EP. So, um... Were you writing in the hospital? Uh, here and there, yes. Yeah? Yeah, but I, there wasn't really much motivation in the hospital. You're hooked up to a machine. You see a lot of other patients that are sick and stuff. Yeah, it's so, hard to hold a fucking notepad there, yeah. dude. Is well, that... I just write on my phone, but, like, but like the inspiration as far as, like, the motivation for the type of stuff I was doing wasn't there in the hospital. Yeah. But when I got out, that's when I would do most of my writing and whatnot. So who's the producer you're working with? Critical. He's, a, he's Critical. out of the IE. You working with different producers or just him? Uh, just him right now. Um, I got some other stuff in the work that might be with some other producers, but mainly with Critical. Okay. And um, so, what, so what was the plan when you started working on music? You were going to record, and then where, what were you going to do with your music? So... Uh, I met up with Critical the first time. I told him this was going on. So I said, I need to do this. I told him how many songs, when I needed them all done by, whatnot. And so the plan was just to be able to get done with the EP, get it mixed, mastered, everything, so I could release it when I was in the hospital, actually. Was this the first time you put, um, like, a good amount of money into the mixing and mastering? Yes, yeah. Okay, so you, you invested a little bit. So... I know that we we did. I ended up working on some merch for you. You invested in that, and right. you started investing in your music, like going to studios, recording, which was a whole lot. It's a whole other caliber than yeah. you recording in your laundry room or whatever the heck it is. Right, you know what right. I mean? So you get the music, and it's on Spotify. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes, Amazon Music, everywhere on all on all platforms. Okay, so what was the plan after you got the music out there? What's the plan now? What are you so, doing so now? Now or the plan then? The, the, plan, pl the plan then. The plan then was I thought, you know, I'm going to be in the hospital for like a month. I'm going to go ahead and promote the shit out of this. I'm going to spread it everywhere. But see, that's me thinking like I thought I'm going to have all this time. What am I going to do? And that was not the case because I was sick as hell in the hospital. I didn't want to be on my phone. I didn't want to do shit. I just wanted to be in my bed sleeping or making the time go by faster. But... Being on the phone, promoting was definitely not one of the things I wanted to be doing. Did um did you start to get spiritual like after a while because of you know when you when you're dealing with that kind of stuff, did you get 
a little bit closer to your faith, or was that that's always been there? To be honest with you, it's always been there. Yeah, it, it's always been there. Like like they say, pray when it's good, pray when it's bad. Like don't just do it when when it's bad. Yeah. So I've always been been religious and whatnot, um, but it helped a lot. Oh yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Um, one of the things I'll, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, um, I was super impressed when I saw Dreaming, uh-huh. like, um, and I'm 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 super glad that you got that out on a platform that has a lot of viewers. Right. And I thought it was funny because, um, you know, you, uh, you know, I'm not gonna dog everybody on Latin beasts, right. but you know, and I'm not gonna hide it either. Um, there's a lot of the same repetition, the same monotonous stuff you see on that channel right um but i do understand that that channel has a big following so when i saw your video on latin beast i said this is such a contrast to what's out there because you know you see these guys that have videos and they want to pop pop take your eyes out put them back on and all that stuff right and to see something like dreaming was like man this is you could tell that the song was and 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 Mind you, like, I've heard all your songs. I'm, I'm a fan of some of them. You know what I mean? Like, right. um, just some of them. Well, no, well, you, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like, like the, the honest right, truth no, is yeah, that, like, yeah, yeah. like even, even myself, when I used to make songs back in the days, I, I wouldn't like every one of my songs. Right. And I wouldn't, I didn't feel like they all had the potential, but there were certain songs that stuck out more than others. Like, a couple of your greatest songs, Bounce Like a Bird, one of my favorite songs. Uh, drip, of course. Right. You know that's like my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. And then when I heard, I mean, those songs were were fun, and they were like they talked about, you know, some of the stuff that rappers normally talk about. But when you got into this song called Dreamin', it really felt like you were writing about your journey. Right. And was that the intention? That was definitely the intention. That was the intention. That was definitely the intention. Okay, so. Um, Dreaming comes out, and uh, what was the consensus? What are people, your your fans, uh, your your family, your friends, what were they saying about that? They all liked it, especially, like you said, because they're like, you damn, you're really rapping and, like, telling your story and whatnot. And it's even a popular with everybody because on, like, the social media, not social media, but on the platforms I have them on, they let you know what songs, like, the popular out of that EP or whatnot. And Dreaming's on a lot of them. Right. And, and um, what is the... What is your ultimate goal in music? Like, because as independent artists, it's hard to get, um, it's hard to get deals. You know, what I mean, let's right. just let's just be realistic. A lot of a lot the, the way that the uh, you know the the music model is nowadays for independent artists is uh, create a fan base on social media, right. uh, create a buzz, get a following, and then um, sell your music and sell merch. What, where are you at now? What is your plan for whatever it is that you're doing in the future? What, where do you want to be? What is the pinnacle to you? What is the pinnacle? The be, pinnacle. Be doing what I love and getting paid for it and being my, my ultimate career. I mean, doing going on tour, doing shows. But what if that doesn't happen? What Are you going to be happy with... Cause, cause for some people it doesn't happen. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. No, yeah, I but that. and 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 like that's what we all aim to achieve. Everybody, everybody aims for success. Right. And if it happens, fantastic. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 a great thing if it happens. And you know, God, God, uh, you know, bless you if you get that deal. Right. And like that's what we all aim to do. But I guess spiritual wise, you know, if you could walk away tomorrow, would you be happy with what you've done? Or do you want to continue doing stuff to maybe try to get to that point where you do get the deal, where you do get the music video? Uh, nah, I wouldn't be happy because I feel like there's so much more Big Mo to put out. There's so much more stuff I still want to do and whatnot. And I feel like I got a lot more potential, a lot more every, a lot more to show of myself. Right. You haven't shown everything right. just yet. And like you said, if I would I be happy walking away, not tomorrow, but just if I... Yeah, in general. If I, if I, if I, in general... That's a tough one. I'd be happy with this work I've been putting out. Yeah. Because it's quality, everything I put. Oh, I love it, dude. It's dope all shit. My heart dope into shit. It. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I I've asked myself that a couple of times because it's like this is like one of my, like career wise, like one of my last goals that like I really want, or not goals I should say dreams. Because like as a kid, you know, I, I wanted to be sports. That didn't work out. Whatever. But like this is like the thing for me. Where do you see yourself in the fucking pocket? 
of all these artists that are out nowadays because it is it's turning to a to a circus of of a bunch of people. Right. I mean, I just saw the little Nas X video. Oh yeah, yeah. With him wearing high heels and you know the devil banging him, like it's crazy out right, there, man. Right, like right. and 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 now it's like come to the point where it's an it's a free for all for uh, artists and creativity and nationalities and you got the cancel society you got right. you know politics coming into music now where do you find yourself in the ocean of these rappers that are all over the place that's a good question I mean I want to I, you said cancel culture it's like you got to think about what you say and what you don't I don't want to think about that shit I just want to be free and open say what I want to say but at the same time, I ain't going to be dancing on no devil or anything like that because, to me, that shit was kind of lame. Yeah. Um, I know it's getting him his attention, his his fame, for if you want to say. He's getting the negative attention. Like they say, sometimes not... Um, not all attention is good attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah not, all, not all bad publicity is good publicity. Yeah. So, in that aspect, I just see myself, like I said, just being free, doing what I want and not having to worry about other people's opinions or whatnot. Right. Okay, so... Um, that uh, people say is if you have negative energy in your circle, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. Right. So, so what kind of people are positive in your life and, and drive you to, to do your future projects or drive you in life? In life? Well, that's, that's, that's a hard only because there's so many people. Cause like you said, in your circle, I don't, re- I don't have anybody in my immediate circle that's negative. So, like, off top, my mom and my dad, um, everything that he's went through and he, he kept fighting. Um, my mom, because everything she's had to go through, had to go through losing my pops. And then later on, g- dealing with me, having to take care of me with through this whole journey as well. And never complained about it, never anything. Like, she just keeps going. Right. And then as far as, like, hustling-wise, like, you, um, Austin, uh, who else? And then Adolph Musically and stuff like that. Guys, keep me motivated to like keep grinding and, and keep going. Like, like I said, that's why I said nobody in my immediate circle is like negative to me. Even, even uh, my girl, she keeps grinding. Like I rubbed off on her kind of type thing. Yeah. Now it's like bouncing back and forth. So it's like it's crazy because I'm not around anybody negative. The negative people are the people that aren't in my immediate circle. You know, social media and all that other bullshit. But that's nothing to to wipe out. What do you think about? Um all of the people that create negative energy on social media. You know what I mean? Like, like because that's around. Like, no matter what the fuck you do, like, it, you know, when I used to do uh, videos for radio, which I haven't right. done in a while, but when I used to do it, there'd be, like, ten great comments, and then there'd be one comment, like, I think I was uh, interviewing... I read a comic the other day um, on the video I did with uh, Danielle Villarreal. And it was a video that was a guy on America Me. Right, right. And uh, there was a guy, I, I was joking with him mm-hmm. when he said he was in the back doing production and I told him if he swept the floor. <laughs> and, and, and there was a guy that told me that he, that he should kick my ass. And, like, I look at that stuff and I, I'm like, ah, you know, that, that type of stuff is going to happen. Right. What do you think about that shit? Like, what, what do you think about these people on social media, these rappers that are, you know, that comment on everything, and they, they kind of like internet bang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, for one, I think they're a joke. But I ain't gonna lie. At, at the, first, the first time, when was it? I seen a comment or something like I don't even remember what it was. I, I remember what it was, but I'm not going to say it. Oh, I'm not talking about the Dreaming video, because oh. I've had them before, before even that. Oh, before Dreaming. Like, before Dreaming, I, I put a, a snippet of No Filter up on the Thizzler, <laughs> and a bunch of people talking shit, whatever. I'm like, damn, I thought this song's pretty tight. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I and then I had to, like, get out of my film. I'm like, man, fuck these people. <laughs> I hit up Austin, and we were talking, and he's like, dude, he goes, I went and looked at these. He goes, a lot of these are bots or, like, people that don't even have a picture. Like, yeah. So they just create pages to talk shit. So it's like, Yeah, they hide behind yeah, the, the so page. Yeah, so they just bitches. Yeah. Like, female puppies. So I don't give a fuck about that shit. That shit doesn't even bother me. It doesn't do shit. Doesn't, it doesn't mess it doesn't up your motivation. Yeah. It doesn't mess up my motivation. It's just, it's just comedy that... 
Thanks for the view, motherfucker. Yeah. Like haters gonna hate. Yeah, yeah. That's haters what, gonna hate. That's what I'm saying. Thanks for the view. Thanks for uh, doing the algorithms, commenting on it, so no other people can see it. You played yourself. Yeah. So I like it. That's dope, man. That's dope. Um, you know what I was gonna say? Is there any uh, podcast that you're watching right now? Any any? Mm, no, actually, I, I haven't really got into podcasts big like that. Oh. I mean, I, someone will give me a recommendation or something. I'll check it out here, there, whatever, but um, nothing that I'm really, like, listening to wise. Now, uh, we talked about merch. We talked about some of your, your future plans. I don't want to give away too much because it's still in the works. Right. But what is, and, and I don't mean to be kind of um, the same as all the other interviews, but people have to know, what what are you going to do in the future? What are the plans? What are you creating? So... Ever since I've been out of the hospital, I've just been stepping on the gas and going forward. So you saw Dreaming that dropped uh, about less than a month ago. And two weeks ago, I was up in Arizona shooting a video for my song 210. Was that with A1 Yola out yeah, there? Oh, okay. A1 Yola, Trip. So we were out there. And then. Shout out to Trip, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Trip. That's the man right there. That's the uh, homie. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, actually, next week, I'm going to be shooting a video for a Big Hit. That was another one off of my EP. So you got more videos coming? More videos well, coming. Are you going to put those on Latin Beats, or are you going to try to do it everywhere? Uh, I'm not sure. You haven't decided. Possibly Latin Beats or not just, or probably everywhere for sure, but like, but I'm still debating. Dope, dope, and dope. And then as far as I have a, uh, what is it, a single I'm working on in the works right now with Critical. I'm just doing this just kind of like to give the people something. And then after that, I'm going to start uh, with Chapter 2 of The Big Motivation. So I got that in the works. And then I'm also going to be working with um, Frasier Radio. Going to be putting out a mixtape with, with him. So okay. So that'll, that'll be coming out in the summer, I believe. So, like I said, I'm just working on that, more merch. And then hopefully stuff's opening up now, so start doing shows and everything, go out and do live shows because I miss the stage. I miss going dumb on That's stage. That's right. Yeah, man, the stage, there's no, there's no greater feeling than the stage and... Like people don't understand that that aren't performers, right? Uh, but once you hit the stage, man, it's it's a whole other feeling. So I said that there's no drug that can that compares to being Never. on stage. Never, nothing. And I've done all the drugs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh-huh. way better, even than that pure. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> well, um, I think this might be a good time to wrap it up. Um, any shout outs or people you want to? Uh, you know, give a shout out to, or, or you want to let the people know where they could find your music, any social media stuff that, you know, you want to p- put out there. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's been supporting me, uh, showing me love, not only with just music, but on my journey, uh, the constant text, prayers, love and support that should actually help me out a lot more than you believe. I think that's another reason. Like I never felt depressed, never felt like, like lonely or like, I mean, like I said, not really sad, but you, everyone has their days. But I think that's the main reason I didn't, because all of the love and support from everybody, from, like, my mom, my girl, you guys, Austin, all my family, all my Minnesota family, they... they that's right. My Minnesota family, they they helped me out a lot, raising, fundraising, everything to help me with my medical bills. So that meant the world. I never expected anybody to help me, to be honest. That's super dope, man. So, yeah, so I got mad love for them. And, yeah, everybody that just continues to support my music and everything. It's it's super good to reconnect with you. It's super good to uh, know that um, you're continuing your musical journey and that um, we got good stuff coming in the future from Big Mo. Definitely. Um, hey, man, props to you, bro. And we're going to do another interview uh, in the months to come after, you know, you get things get back in the swing of things. Right. And... Uh, We'll let the people know what's up, man. Well, they're already back in the swing of things. That's right. This pandemic didn't stop me for shit. That's right. Big Mo in the house, man. Thank yeah. you, bro. Thank you for having me, Sancho Loco. Sancho Loco, out. Yee-hee. Peace. <laughs>